Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully having an amazing day. I want to give you guys some updates to the release dates for not only the RX 8000 series, this is a bit of disappointing news there, but also some updates concerning the X3D variants of Granite Ridge, also known as Ryzen 9000. Without further ado, let's just begin with RDNA 4 because it's probably the simpler news to get through and it won't take us too long and it's not too complicated. So, uh, there have been a lot of rumours that RDNA 4 would be releasing this year, and if you look at it on a surface level, there is some sense there. After all, Zen 5 has already been announced, and of course releasing this year. We also have a ton of patches that have appeared in Linux, and so on and so forth. But, if you dig a little bit deeper, there are some questions to be raised, and if you've been watching the channel for any length of time over the last, let's say, month or maybe a little bit more now, You'll know that I've been saying that my sources are just telling me that this is not correct. We're going to see these GPUs launch next year. And there are a couple of reasons behind this, but perhaps one of the most, well, obvious ones is that there is simply an oversupply of N31 and 32 GPUs that are floating around. And this is one of the reasons that uh, my source was telling me that N32 would be getting those game bundles, which turned out to be true. I'm not 100% certain if that's in every region. Um, someone can let me know in the comments below. But basically, they just want to try to shift as much inventory as possible. And this is not certainly a unique AMD problem. NVIDIA are kind of going through this, but it's getting a little bit better, depending again on the region and the specific variant and SKU. With that said, though, I was being told that we would see CES be the, la be the launch uh, announcement anyway for RDNA 4, and uh, we would probably see the GPUs launching in the first quarter of 2025. But now we have an update thanks to a pretty reliable leaker, Kepler L2, on Twitter. I refuse to call it X, it will never happen. So, um, long story short, N48 is going to be announced at CES, with the first quarter being the target release date. Meanwhile, N44, which are the lower end variants, those will release most likely in the second quarter. Now, it's going to be very interesting to see just how they perform. I've said multiple times on the channel before that I've heard between 7900 XT and 7900 XTX. This is in relation to the rasterization performance, probably at uh, 4K. But which benchmark that is, whether it is you know, a single benchmark, multiple benchmarks, and whether that's indicative of final performance is quite difficult to know right now. For example, it could be early simulation stuff, things could change, especially with the release date being pushed back, are they going to get higher clock frequencies on the GPU, and so on and so on. As for ray tracing performance, I suspect that's going to be much better. There have been a lot of leaks that indicate that this is true, not least of which, of course, the alleged performance of the PS5 Pro. Now, there are certainly a lot of differences between the PS5 Pro and the PS5 base model systems, so you can't exactly make a one-to-one -one comparison. There is a crap ton more of additional compute units, for example, there's differences in the TMU, and you know what, there's just a lot of stuff different. But ultimately, it's a pretty good indicator that, like for like anyway, RDNA 4 is going to be much more performant, and it's certainly what I've been hearing as well. Ultimately, it's going to be down to the pricing. Um, there is no real indicator at the moment I have of solid pricing information. I've just heard that AMD want to be very aggressive. And if you think about it from a logical perspective, N48 launching later would make a lot of sense because obviously that would be targeting the lower end, or should I say replacing the lower end RDNA3 GPUs. Meanwhile, N48, again, presumably, would basically be doing a complete replacement of the uh, N32 and 33 GPUs, the higher-end ones. Um, they're using GDDR6, of course. The specifications are on screen. I'm not going to re repeat them again, but we're looking at 32 and 16 for the um, compute configuration. And ultimately, it should be a pretty interesting architecture. We're looking, I've heard around 120, sorry, 130, 140 uh, square millimeters for the size of the die um, for the lower end variant and probably around 230 to 240 for the N48 variant. That's not 100% solid, so we'll have to wait and see. I'll be very curious again to see what the marketing strategy is and also what AMD are facing from competition. Obviously, you have Intel's Battle Mage, which presumably roughly speaking, I mean, let's not quibble about 10 or 20% performance. Uh, it's going to be roughly kind of on par. 
again, as cl at least according to all the rumors. And as for NVIDIA, well, obviously the high-end Blackwell variants will have launched, but will NVIDIA launch the lower end RTX 50 cards like the 5060, the 5070 and so on, or will they just kind of trickle them out? Who knows? It's going to be a very interesting set of launches. Speaking of interesting launches, now let's shift our focus to Ryzen 9000. So I'm not going to go over the specs again because we've spoken so many times about them, but the gist is, of course, the uh, vanilla variants, the non x 3 d parts, they will launch first, but allegedly, anyway, there's going to be less of a gap between the uh, vanilla and the X3D parts. And the rumor is that we're going to see the X3D variants launching at around September, or the very possibly an announcement. This would make sense given Intel's, of course, next generation CPUs. There's just basically a crap ton of stuff, at least in terms of CPUs, that's going to happen in, um, well, basically Q3, late Q3, early Q4 this year. So, uh, <laughs> hope you're saving your pennies if you want to upgrade. Anyway, WCCF Tech have managed to grab a little bit of information uh, regarding the X3D variants and the cache configuration on the CCDs. So let's just quickly look at that, shall we? Of course, I will leave a linky to this in the video description. So we are looking at the 9950X3D 32 megabytes CCD, so that's 64 megabytes L3, plus 64 megabytes of 3D V cache, so that's 128 megabytes, plus of course the L2 caches and L1 caches, which I'm not going to read out. The 9900X3D, again 32 megabytes per CCD, and 64 megabytes of um, 3D V cache, so again that's 128 megabytes because um, even though you have a few cores disabled on one of the so on the CCDs, obviously it still has the full complement of L3 cache on that specific L, um, on that specific um, CCD. If I can talk, that would be just brilliant. And the 9800X3D, well, um, you have only 32 megabytes of L3 for that CCD because well, there's only a single CCD, and then you have one. 64 megabytes of additional 3D V cache. So again, essentially you only have one V cache, which is going to be uh, shared across the two CCDs. If there's a two uh, two CCD configuration, Jesus, that's hard to say. Maybe it's just early in the morning. I've not had enough coffee. Anyway, um, it's a little bit disappointing that we're not going to see like you know, an oh my goodness, we have like you know two two V caches, one per CCD. That that was the dream, but. The dream has now just been decimated. Um, so, yeah. Re rest in peace to 3D Vcash in a configuration. Sadness. Anyway, I think that's just about it for this particular video. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed it. Um, I will hopefully see you guys soon. Take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.